All right, so now that we've seen how we can use uh, actions from the GitHub Actions uh, Marketplace uh, in our workflows, uh, we're gonna start building out some more complex workflows uh, in some examples that uh, you may actually use um, in your day-to-day. -day. Uh, so our first workflow we're gonna take a look at is building a workflow that will allow us to run integration tests um, against an API. Uh, so you, know, you imagine you're building an API as you deploy to your various environments. You might want to be able to execute integration tests at any point in time, maybe after you merge new code, uh, maybe you want to run in a cron. So like every 12 hours, you're just validating that your API is still responding correctly um, after changes are made. Uh, so there's various use cases um, uh, for doing this. Um, and so in our particular example, we're gonna set it up as a cron. Uh, so it'll be running uh, every you know five minutes just to hit our API, make sure everything's still working. And we'll set up with a manual trigger so that way we can execute it anytime we want. And so for our particular example, uh, in our three uh, cron example start uh, branch, um, you'll see there's that cron example uh, subfolder. Uh, so for this particular workflow, we'll be using this uh, folder quite a bit. Uh, so in here is just some uh, background. What this is, this is a node project uh, that basically uses Cucumber.js and uh, Pactum.js to execute an integration test against uh, API endpoint in uh, HTTP uh, pastebin. Uh, so because it's a node project, we'll have our package.json. Uh, if you're not familiar with a, a node, uh, package.json just allows us to provide some metadata about our project as well as the dependencies and, and scripts that we want to execute. Um, so you'll see in our dependencies, we require Cucumber and Pactum uh, to run our code. If we step back, our yarn lock file, um, if you're not familiar with yarn, it's similar to the package uh, JSON lock where it just pins our dependencies. And so that if we do an install, we have repeatable builds because we're using these particular versions. And then inside the features folder, uh, this now has code that's tied to both Pactum.js and uh, Cucumber.js. Uh, so we have this uh, feature. Um, so basically we describe a feature of what we want to do. Um, so in this example test here, we're making a get, repos uh, get request to this particular endpoint, and we expect a response to come back with 418. Um, and then basically we have our step definitions, which refers to that file and what we want to execute when those things happen. And so uh, this course isn't about Cucumber or, you know, Pactum JS. Um, they're both interesting tools. Um, this is just an example project for executing a workflow and showing how that can function. Um, so if you're interested, I can check out the links uh, to the projects here. Um, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and go back to the workflow. All right, so to get started, well, what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and jump over to our IDE. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a new uh, workflow file. Uh, so we're just going to call this cron.yaml. Uh, what we'll do is we're just going to copy the syntax from our shared actions. We're going to paste it uh, over here and we're going to update some of our values. So for our name, we're going to do uh, cron example. For our triggers, uh, we're going to go ahead and just leave this with uh, workflow dispatch and we'll come back and see how we can add a trigger for doing the cron uh, type expression that we're looking to do. Uh, the reason for this is it it's just it's a little bit easier to build our workflow out and make sure it runs correctly on how we want to do if we have a manual process um, before we worry about that additional functionality. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and leave this with a manual trigger. And so for our jobs now, we're going to go ahead and update this to be run integration test. Uh, so usually what I do when I'm building a workflow is first I go ahead and see what steps I need to do to manually do the workflow I'm, I'm looking to do. Um, and then from there, I can go ahead and take those nodes and translate them into a workflow and then go ahead and build out the various steps to make that actionable. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, try that now. Uh, so for our particular example that we're looking to do here, we want to run our integration tests that are tied to this particular uh, project here, our cron example. And so the first thing we would need is we need our code available to us. And we get that by, as we learn, using the actions checkout uh, shared action. Uh, this will go ahead and check out our repository. And so we'll have all these files available. Um, so we already have that step completed. Our next step is we're going to need node available uh, in our environment um, in order to 
run our node project. Uh, so to, you know, install our dependencies, run our scripts and various things like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a node. So we're going to set up node. Uh, so typically if you're working on a node project, you have it locally, but that's not repeatable. Um, so we're going to want our workflow to be repeatable by installing node. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is for our particular project, we are using yarn and so when we install node we get npm available to us and we could use that however as an example we're gonna go ahead and install yarn on our machine so we can run that in a workflow um, so we'll go ahead and install yarn so then for the project before we can do anything we need to install the dependencies for the project so we have all of the libraries we need um, so then and so we would do this by using npm install, or in our case, yarn install. And then finally, once we have our dependencies, uh, what we need to do is we need to execute uh, Cucumber. And so we do that by referencing the Cucumber.js library. And we happen to have a script already set up for this. We just need to actually run our test script inside our package JSON. And so to do that, we just need to run our test. And so in theory, uh, we should be able to run these steps in our workflow and uh, execute our test. Um, so uh, to do that, uh, first thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and set up node. Uh, so there is an action to do this. Um, so what we'll do is we're just going to add a name. And we're just going to say set up node JS 12. Uh, so for example, project, we're referencing node 12. Uh, so we'll do uses. And so we're going to use actions. And we're going to do set up node we'll do at v1 and so this particular action uh, expects us to provide the node version that we want to install in our environment uh, so this is done through this parameter uh, so we have node version and let's do 12.x and so what this will do is it'll go and download the latest version of node 12 and install that and make that available in the environment. And so if we did a node dash dash version, it should output 12 dot something in our uh, workflow file. And so this parameter allows us to be very specific on our version, or we could um, keep it open where we you know we have the major version 12 and then we could have the minor uh, like this. All right, and then so now we've set up node. We need to go ahead and install yarn. Um, so to do that, um, we'll go ahead and add a name. We'll do install yarn. And so now we'll do run and we'll do npm install global yarn. Uh, so this is one of the ways that you can install yarn uh, on your machine. Uh, so we'll be using that method. And then for installing your dependencies, We'll have our name, we'll do install dependencies. Do our run command, we'll do a yarn install frozen lock file. And so, uh, it, similar to npm, uh, if you have a package lock, uh, in our case, it'll be a yarn lock for yarn. Um, if you pass this command, it's going to install the exact dependency versions that are defined in here. So we just want to make sure we pass that so it's repeatable. And then finally for our test, we'll do name, we're going to do run, test, run, and we'll do yarn test. All right, so one last thing we need to do before we test our workflow is we need to update the context of where we're running our commands. And so what I mean by that is for the scope of this workflow, we've been working under the assumption that cron example is our project and that this is what we want to uh, execute everything against, um, which makes sense because if this was my project, um, I would go ahead and just run yarn install to install my dependencies. I would do yarn test to go ahead and execute this test script and everything should work. However, this is a subfolder in this main repository here. And so what that means is for our context is the root of our repo is actually the context we're running everything against. So when we check out our repository, if you remember, we saw that we had our license file, our readme, and our cron example folder. Um, and then that is the root of our context and where we're executing everything. 
So, you know, if we check out our repo right now, we'll get all these files. We'll set up Node. We'll have Node available here. But then once we go to run these commands, we're going to run into an issue. And basically, when we go to do our yarn install, there's no going to be no yarn lock or package JSON. So we're not going to install any dependencies because it's looking for it at the root of our repo. And so really, what we need, would need to do is actually run these commands against this subfolder. Um, so, you know, we could CD uh, into this folder and then execute the commands inside here. Uh, we could pass in the exact path when we run these commands. Um, however, this can get very messy if we are building very complex workflows that are doing multiple things inside that one folder. And so another option that's available to us is we can update our working directory of where we want our commands to be run for a particular job. And so to do that, what we can do is we can provide a keyword called defaults with a keyword called run. And then we'll do working directory. And then we can specify the directory that we want to run our commands inside of. And so this will be the context for this particular job. And so what defaults is used for is it's a way to create a map of default settings that you want to apply to all jobs in a workflow or all steps depending on where you place this so you know if this was outside jobs we could apply it to every single job that runs or if it's in a particular job it only affects this one and so by providing dot run we can provide things like the default shell that we want to execute commands you know bash versus shell or we can provide our working directory uh, so that we can specify which directory in our repo um, that we want to reference uh, so actually the directory in our you know our job and because it's we checked out the repo it exists and so basically now when we do our yarn install lock file it's from this directory so it'll find the files we're looking for so now that we've made that change if we go ahead and commit our changes and push them up to the repo all right so now we push our code if we go ahead and go back to the github ui uh, if we go to the actions tab uh, we should see our uh, new workflow so we have our cron example go ahead and execute our workflow all right, so now that our job's complete, we'll go ahead and click on our workflow, click on our job, and so you'll see we have our setup job. Uh, we do our checkout. Uh, we go ahead and do our setup Node.js. Uh, so this will go ahead and use the particular version we provided. Um, so you see we installed Node, and we can see our versions. We have 12.22, and we install npm as part of Node. So we have 6, 14, 16. So then we have our custom uh, command that we wrote for installing Yarn. Uh, so you see that we went ahead and add Yarn to our global uh, NPM packages. Uh, so now we can use it. We went ahead and installed our dependencies. Uh, so you see we're using Yarn uh, version 1.22. We're grabbing our packages. Uh, we're linking and we're building and then we're done. And then we go ahead and execute our test. And so you see here for our test, um, we have our test file. Um, basically, it's only doing one thing. It's making that uh, API request to that one endpoint. And we got the response back that we're looking for. Um, so you see here it passed. And then we do our checkout and our cleanups. All right, so our workflow is working really good. We've seen that it does work. Uh, so our last component is going to be the cron-like expressions. All right, uh, so to add a, uh, a scheduled trigger, um, basically uh, what we need to do is we'll come back to our uh, IDE. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and update our triggers. Uh, so as I mentioned before, you can have multiple triggers uh, defined for your workflow. Uh, so for a cron, uh, we need to do on schedule. And then for schedule, we need to specify cron. And then we need to specify the cron expression that will be used uh, for evaluating when this should run. All right, for our expression, I'm just going to do five asterisks. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically normally would have a cron job run every minute, but GitHub uses this to run it about every five minutes. Uh, so a few things to note is it's it, this is not a guarantee that it will run every five minutes. It's just GitHub will try to schedule this and try to run it every five minutes. A similar pattern if you're trying to target a specific time uh, because GitHub has to you know listen for that event, uh, schedule this job, 
and then kick it off, run it. It's not a guarantee that it will run. All right, and then so if we go ahead and uh, add and commit our changes, uh, we can go ahead and get to the go GitHub UI. And we'll go ahead and uh, see if our workflow will trigger. Uh, so this might take a little bit, so I might want to pause the video and come back to it, or we can check on it later. Uh, so if we go to the GitHub UI, and if we go to our actions, we go to our cron example, um, you'll see that after a while, uh, we'll have a few runs that are uh, triggered by a schedule. And so the schedule, that just means it was triggered uh, because of the cron expression we, we did and the event was a scheduled event. And if we go into it, uh, we should see the same results where our tests were run and they passed. Otherwise, if they would have failed, uh, we would have seen an error. Uh, so one thing to note is this is going to continuously run. Uh, so I recommend that you go ahead and comment out uh, the section we just added. Um, so then that way, if you keep a repository up, this isn't just uh, constantly running all the time. Uh, using some of your uh, limited uh, workflows that can run, then be triggered, or if you're a private repo, uh, so it's not wasting your uh, minutes.